Baiju is kind of a dying art form. It's more than 600 years old. So I'm assuming a lot of you probably clicked on this video thinking, oh, I know what Baijiu is. That's a Chinese liquor. This video is actually not about Baijiu. It's about Baijiu, which I'll explain in just a second. But in honor of the wonderful thought, I am going to have a drink as I talk about Baijiu. So if you don't know, I actually did live in China for about nine, maybe it was 10 months in 2016. When I first moved to China, we were living in Nanjing and then later on we moved to Beijing. So I have a bunch of videos on this channel about both places, about generally like what my time in China was like. I'll have a bunch of those linked down below. And I also have a blog that has like a packing list so if you are headed to China soon especially if you're headed to Nanjing definitely go check out those resources down below but anyways Baiju is a type of song it's a type of music it comes from Nanjing and it's from the Yuan dynasty so it's more than 600 years old the singing was done in the Nanjing dialect which if you've never heard someone speaking in Nanjing dialect um, it is a lot different sounding than Mandarin I had the opportunity to hear many people with the dialect and with just like the accent things just sound different Literally the only thing I know how to say is ayolayowa. So that's the language essentially that this art form is being done in. There are a couple different instruments that are involved and then there is someone doing the vocals. You're gonna see this actually performed later in the video because I had the awesome opportunity to go see it at the center in Nanjing. Give me a second to get to that part. First, it's storytelling. It's all about storytelling. And also what's really important to know is that this was mostly popular and performed among lower class people in China. It was not the upper class using this art form. It was almost like a lower class, like Chinese opera. There is a little bit of talk singing too. You'll hear this in a second. They actually use metal chopsticks and a plate. That's um, one of the main instruments in Baiju. I just remember that very specific way you're supposed to hold it. In the performance that you're gonna see, it's actually with my friend, Dare. And I actually have another video of her singing um, linked down below. Dare, you probably thought this video was going up a very long time ago. Um, we were in Nanjing with her and so she was really into like the arts and everything. She got really involved in Baiju and went and did this practice. That's why there's a Wai Gua Ren, um, a foreigner, <laughs> singing Baiju. So according to Wikipedia, these are things I don't remember. It's kind of acted out in a way and it needs two to five performers. Oh, one thing I do definitely remember is this is um, an art form that's heavily tied into silk production in Nanjing. So, um, Nanjing brocade was like a very expensive fabric. I am very fortunate to have a piece of it in my bedroom. I will show you that in the video. But this music was made essentially to be sung while they were weaving. So if you want to see what the like big, um, I don't even know what they're called, looms? That they were like weaving this very nice fabric on. If you want to see what that stuff looks like and kind of what more about that production side looks like, I will have a video link down below. I think I called it like Nanjing's most underrated museum because it's the cultural museum or the folk art museum. So they did talk Talk about Baiju and they talked about Nanjing Brocade and all that stuff in that museum. But anyways, um, Baiju was sung while they were like making the fabric. So the lyrics involved in Baiju are actually qu quite depressing. They are not super hopeful because these were sung by people who were working extremely hard in harsh weather conditions and not getting paid very much. Baiju is really important to keep going. Like this is a piece of Nanjing culture that reflects the language, the Nanjing dialect, which is so different than Mandarin and it's storytelling telling songs. So this is telling stories of people's lives. So you get a look back into history at what people's lives were like. But unfortunately, Baiju is kind of a dying art form. So there is one place in Nanjing where you can go to learn about Baiju and it's really been just one woman and she is freaking awesome. I didn't understand a single thing she said. Um, I had a little bit translated to me as we went, but I was there to witness her interacting with my friend Dare and she was teaching us about Baiju and about Nanjing culture in the process. So for me, this was really a once in a lifetime opportunity. I could not say no. Um, this lady's place is really close to Fuzi Miao. And actually I think the song that they're practicing is about Fuzi Miao. And I'm really sorry if I pronounce things wrong. I don't actually speak Chinese. Um, and I will do my best to link like an article or some kind of information where you can learn more about how you can go to this place in Nanjing and maybe like learn from her. So now I want to show you what it was like in that center where um, you go to learn about Baiju. And I want to show you a little bit of what Baiju looks like. Oh, <laughs> 
I didn't really know what to do with this footage, so I hope I did it a little bit of justice. If you have any information, if you grew up in Nanjing and you know a lot about Baiju, please leave a comment down below. I'd love to learn more about it. And oh, let me show you the brocade, the Nanjing brocade that I have in my bedroom. Thank you for watching this video and I will see you guys in a couple of days. I'm doing my, honestly, my best effort at trying to get video two videos a week to you guys and it has been really hard. Um, I'm feeling a little sick and I am having a big transition at work right now. Things are about to get more settled. Anyways, I'm gonna go. Thank you for watching. Okay, bye.